And now I'm going to introduce uh, Carlos Marquez, hoping that the pronounce is fine. He is a marine and estuarine ecologist and uh, he is a full professor at the Cambria University in Portugal. He is director of the Marine and Environmental Sciences Center and he has worked on biological and ecological processes in marine and estuarine ecosystem, system ecology and ecological modeling. He has coordinated several research projects and published more than 300 scientific papers, as well as several books. So the floor is yours. 15 minutes, please. Thank you. You're muted, Joao. Yes, you're muted. Unmute. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for the nice presentation about myself. I wouldn't say better. Uh, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, as marine biologist, uh, as Fabiana said, uh, coastal ecosystems, namely estuaries, has al always been at the center of my research interests, and. Um, Having started as a conventional ecologist from the 90s, I started interacting with people like Brian, Soren, Sven, uh, Simone, Felix, and so on, and so on, and so on. <clears throat> and I uh, brought to my field of research many of the concepts, topics, and knowledge that you heard before in the previous presentations. Okay. Uh, and I will try to contribute to the final discussion in this um, uh, workshop, <clears throat> this uh, webinar. When you talk about coastal systems, uh, you talk about uh, something that is uh, complex because coastal systems depend on coastal processes. Coastal processes are defining the coastal form, basically. They include, of course, erosion, weathering, deposition, they have a particular spatial and temporal dynamics. And uh, we, what we have hacking are waves, wind, tides, currents, the sediments, of course, that are controlled by these elements, but also that control the coastal form. All this is supposed to reach a certain dynamic equilibrium. But climate is a new uh, aspect that we have been exploring when we look upon uh, coastal ecosystems because uh, it influences not only the external marine influences but also the external terrestrial influences that act on the coastal ecosystem. We are talking about bigger waves in the in the winter. Uh, we have been observing that. The amplitude of the waves is increasing. Stronger storms. Of course we talk about sea level rise and all this is connected uh, um, with temperature rise uh, related with CO2 concentrations. This implies that runoff is also changing, sometimes increasing, sometimes decreasing. All this affects the coastal system that includes the natural subsystem, of course, and the societal uh, subsystem. Why do I look, do I look uh, upon coastal systems with such an interest? Because most of the human population lives along the coastal systems and the human activities are so complex in coastal systems that creates an incredibly an incredibly interesting problem to be managed. And actually, this is a very tricky puzzle to, to manage. Usually we use this deep sea approach. Of course, we have the drivers that are uh, proceeding from our needs as a society. Uh, we have the activities that are supposed to fulfill our needs, but that creates pressures. Pressures can state, uh, can uh, change the state of the system. This will impact on the welfare, so we need to respond in some way. So we have measures that might be legal, it might be economical, it might be from the ing engineering point of view. Of course, the measures are going to influence the drivers, changing it, but they can act directly on the activities or on the pressures. So this is a complex uh, uh, system where ecological sustainability must always be seen within 
an ecosystem integrated uh, framework and ecosystem integrity framework. And to reach this is really, really a crucial challenge in terms of ecology and the science of ecology. This is a more detailed uh, view of the previous uh, slide, and I'm not going to enter in detail on this. Adaptive management cycles, you all know about this. But what I want to uh, emphasize in this slide here is that climate change is basically acting on the pressures. And that's where we need to uh, focus uh, when we want to include climate change in the equation. Well, <clears throat> we have uh, many options. And uh, the options, as we have been, in, uh, have been seeing in the previous presentations, presentations, are very much driven by uh, political choices and societal choices. Many people would, would like to go business as usual. It's not possible. It will not be possible. Uh, but also uh, people that want to go deep green are out of reality. We will never be able to go deep green because the human population is already too big. <clears throat> we are already used to a certain type <clears throat> of approaches. Uh, so we are already trapped in our situation. We cannot return to deep green. And one of the approaches that is uh, possible and has been undertaken namely in Europe, but also in the US and uh, Australia and uh, lately in China, but also uh, starting in South Africa, uh, is the uh, policy target uh, approach in which we establish policy objectives that normally have connection with the environment, establishing a kind of proxies in the environment. So situations that establish thresholds that we are supposed not to overcome and those thresholds anchor the system in such a way that if we respect the thresholds we establish, we are forced to adjust all the rest. <clears throat> when we look to this, we understand immediately that this approach and sustainability as a whole, sustainability science is very complex and uncertain. You have been seeing this in all the previous presentations from the more detailed approaches up to the more holistic ones like Felix or Simone, you have been seeing that. But there are three drivers that we always have acting on us. <clears throat> First, we look for our human well-being and uh, man uh, to maintain our human health, our safety, our security. But we know that this is a short-term endeavor if we don't respect the endeavor of keeping ecological sustainability and environmental well-being. Because if the environment collapses, of course, our search for human well-being will be deeply affected and will probably collapse as well. But if we look to these two drivers, we cannot forget the third one. That is, when we look to our well-being, we create pressure. <clears throat> And one of the drivers that must control what we do and our choices is what is the tolerance that can be said as um, uh, resilience or resistance or other concepts that were already visited here uh, of environment and, and um, nature as, as a whole regarding the pressures we create when we demand and search for our wealth creation. So when we look upon this, we see societal basic needs need a sustainable management. Okay, if we try to put these three drivers I just referred in a figure, it would it would uh, would would like uh, would, um, uh, would, uh, would uh, okay, it likes like this. Okay, a trigon, a sustainability trigon. If we take the policy target <clears throat> environmental objectives, we can put it at the base of the trigon. Uh, of course, we can use a lot of approaches uh, to consider this kind of <clears throat> environmental policy targets. We can use ecosystem health, uh, we can use ecological sustainability, probably in the weak uh, sustainability definition. We can use a lot of ecological indicators. Uh, I've been working on that for many, many years. 
uh, we can consider ecological services and goods. We can consider resilience. We can preserve natural capital. Okay. Anyway, when we establish a, a threshold of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, we are going to anchor the system here and somewhere in the threshold value that we establish. <clears throat> in the left side of the trigon, we can look to the ecological, sustainable, economic alternatives we can have. Uh, as Simone said, in many cases, political decisions just take into account the GDP, for instance, they concentrate on the economical sector. But at the local level or at a more local level, we can look to stakeholder benefits. Uh, we can also look to economic services and goods, which can be distinguished from ecological services and goods. And <clears throat> we can actually also use well-being indices that are more sophisticated in terms of uh, more subjective as well, because they, they are not just focusing on the product or on the production, but also on other more uh, subjective aspects. But if we look upon our search for well-being, we are going to create pressures. And as much as we look to our well-being, the stronger will be the pressures we create. And if we anchor, we anchor the system uh, in order to respect a given threshold regarding the, the indicators we use, then we need to find uh, environmental solutions. Yes, okay. Environmental solutions that keep the system anchored where we decided that we wanted to keep it. And so they can deal with the pressures you create, but the solutions will be more and more complex. And if they become more and more complex, they will become more and more costly. Uh, other speakers, previous speakers, also approached this question. Uh, revisiting this, I will say that, and Felix also, uh, re, uh, and, and Bob Olanovic also referred this, we cannot maximize each of these aspects. If we try to maximize, anchor the system in a very, very demanding threshold, basically our activities will not uh, be uh, possible. But we need to uh, have it. Otherwise, we cannot uh, sustain our well-being. So uh, we need to uh, anchor the system in a realistic point in terms of indicators that we want to respect we need to uh, look upon our well-being from a realistic point so and keep the pressures at a realistic point meaning that we need to optimize the system we cannot maximize as felix said the most is not the best and i totally agree with that we need to optimize not maximize in this left uh, right side figure I show where uh, applying this approach to the Mondego estuary, this is in the western coast of Portugal, and I've been studying it for many, many years, uh, and applying uh, the water framework directive, the European water framework directive, so and the indicators, multi-metric in indicators that we adopted to the directive, and uh, through the application of a number of mitigation uh, measures and also recovery measures, which I don't, I cannot go in detail, uh, only 15 minutes. Uh, we brought the system in the last 20 years from the position A to within the optimization uh, area of the trigon. Why can't we maximize? This was also shown before, has been shown. If we maximize and we consider the relation between the cost of the solutions we need to implement and the complexity of those solutions that are necessary to keep the sister anchored uh, in the threshold we established, the costs will increase not linearly, but exponentially. Meaning that when we relate the benefits with the complexity of the solutions we are forced to adopt, the benefits at a given point will decrease. Unless we are not internalizing the costs in our pro product. Because 
uh, in many cases, and that's also a political decision, people act as they want because someone is paying the Putin, someone is paying, uh, okay, they, for instance, subsidizing production. Of course, the costs of keeping the environment in good, in good shape will not be internalized in the final product. But if they are, at a given point, we need to choose another activity that is compatible with that kind of sustainable use of coastal ecosystems. This is a transdisciplinary problem and it requires innovative ways of thinking. All these disciplines, I try to summarize a few here in this slide, all these disciplines must be taken into account, but more than uh, other thing, we need to build bridges between all these disciplines in order to deal and manage in a sustainable way coastal ecosystems, but this is applicable to ecosystems as a whole if we want to apply the ecosystem approach. I hope to have uh, uh, contributed to the final discussion that we are going to have in this uh, webinar. So thank you for your attention up to now. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. Very nice and uh, to keep the, the time of 15 minutes. <laughs>